First, we're going to talk about loops. We're going to talk about what a loop is, what the point of a loop is in any programming language, and then how we can actually break out of a loop when we're done with it. Next, we're going to talk about a special type of loop called a for loop, and we're going to talk about what that's for. And finally, we'll talk about a different type of loop called a while loop. So remember, if you end up visiting Mars in your lifetime, expect to see two little moons instead of one big one, like here on Earth. So our first mnemonic today is going to be a bowl of Fruit Loops, the cereal. And it's going to represent our topic in general of loops. And the reason I chose this as the mnemonic is because Fruit Loops, first off, has the word loop inside of it. And second, I like to think of a Fruit Loop bowl as something with a finite amount of loops in it. And when we're programming, we will have a finite amount of loops too. We can't just use computational power forever. So we have different ways to specify how many loops we want in our bowl of cereal. Like, I'll take a big bowl of Fruit Loops, or like, I just want a little bit of Fruit Loops. So what is a loop? A loop is similar to the concept of an if conditional statement, but one that is continually run for as long as some sort of condition stays true. And this is a really handy thing to have. So the point of it is to separate out this repeating logic. So if we need it done 15 times, we don't have to cut and paste an if statement 15 times. We can just specify it once and then a much smaller amount of code for how many times to loop through that if statement. So along with these loops, we now need a way to break out. Now we have a few different ways we can do this. We can create a type of loop, like we're about to learn with our while loops or our for loops, or we can have an infinitely going loop, but then we have a break statement that is inside of it. So in our next lesson, we're going to see how to do this programmatically in our Jupyter Notebook, but we need to think of this as a keyword that we can put somewhere inside of our if statement that's going to tell it when to loop out. So we might have logic nested inside of logic, and some of that nested logic might say, now that we've come to some sort of conclusion or a variable has some sort of value, now go to a different block of code that says break, and then we'll break out of it. And finally, I want to jump over to a different topic just for a moment and not explore it thoroughly, but there's a different style of programming which is called functional programming. And later in the third chapter, we're going to learn a little bit more about this and the difference between object-oriented and functional programming. But I think it's important here to note that if you're a functional programmer, if that's the style you code with, you never use loops. To code a loop like logic, you're going to use a concept called recursion, which we're also going to learn more about later. So remember that there's kind of multiple ways to handle some of these problems, and that when you're thinking of recursion, you're not ever going to need a loop. But loops are really powerful, and I do recommend that you learn them at the beginning. So our next mnemonic is going to be the Fantastic Four, those superheroes that we all love and know. And they're going to represent the topic of our for loop. Now this is F-O-R loop, not the number four. But we can specify four times if we want. And the reason I chose this as the mnemonic is because loops are fantastic, like the Fantastic Four. Is that cheesy? I know, that's just the first thing that came to my mind. So what is a for loop? Well, a for loop is used to repeat a section of code a number of times. This is a great way to just think we specify with an integer how many times to run this loop, 10, 20, 30, whatever we want. It's a way to evaluate sets of various lengths also. So if we have a string and it has 15 characters and we want to evaluate each character, then we can just say, do it as many times as there are letters in this string, or something similar with any of our group types, dictionaries, lists, tuples. Now, when we're thinking of it in a control flow statement like this, like we are when we are talking about groups, we're just saying to execute something repeatedly. And in those cases, we can actually think of a for loop as answering the question, for each item, do something. For each item in a list. For each item in a dictionary. Do blank. So our next mnemonic is going to be a slow-moving sloth, and it represents the topic of a while loop. And the reason why I thought this was a really interesting way to think of a mnemonic for a while loop is because imagine a scenario where you're waiting on a sloth who's driving a car at a red light. I know, but your second car, he's first car, light turns green, and the sloth might take a little while to step on the gas and start moving, and you're thinking, gosh, it's been green for a minute, I'd already be through the intersection. But all of the other cars, including you that are behind it, need to wait until it completes its task. So with a while loop, we can think of them kind of like these cars that are waiting with the sloth at the front. And however fast or slow that first person moves, 
the rest of the cars have to go at least that slow or that fast just to make sure they're always behind the first one. So it kind of executes in an order as the cars move through the intersection. So what's a while loop programmatically? Well, a while loop is a control flow statement, just like before, and it allows code to be executed repeatedly, just like before, but this time it's based on a given Boolean condition, a true or false statement. Now the while loop can be thought of as a repeating if statement, just like the others, that go over a sequence, but you're saying just continually doing this for infinity while some condition is not met or met. So jumping back to our air conditioner metaphor, this would be like saying keep running the air conditioner while the temperature is above 70 degrees. So you're always checking the environment and while that condition is true, you keep executing the code, the loop is going, it's going, it's going, and then all of a sudden the condition's not met, code stops. Okay, so just to recap, let's end this lesson with a quick summary of the mnemonics that we just learned and the concepts that they represent. Our first mnemonic was Toucan Sam from the Fruit Loops box, and he represents the topic of loops in general. We learned that loops are similar to the if conditional statement, but they're in repeat, sometimes infinite, sometimes until some kind of logic is fixed. And it saves time by separating out this logic from the amount of times it's repeated in our code. So that's the big advantage that we get. We learned that break statements are keywords that can be used inside of a loop that can help stop the code when we need. Then we learned a second mnemonic, which was the Fantastic Four, and it represented the topic of a for loop. And we learned that for loops are used to repeat sections of code for a known number of times that we can specify through a variable or an integer. And we learned that this is a great way to evaluate sets of varying lengths also, because we can just set it to the length of the set. And our last mnemonic was a slow moving slot that represented the topic of a while loop. And we learned that while loops are control flow statements in the same way that for loops are, and they can allow code to be executed repeatedly, but this time based on a given Boolean condition. So now let's pull up our trusty Jupyter Notebook and start looking at examples of these ideas expressed in code. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.